Unreal Blueprints Sublevels. So let's re review what we know about levels. Well, we know we can create a new level in the content browser. We know a level is a collection of actors. We also know each level has its own blueprint, the level blueprint, and we can add various functionality to that. We also know we can navigate between levels using the open level by name or by reference node. But the open level node is not particularly useful because anytime we transfer between levels, we lose everything that was in the previous level. And that's not super helpful for us unless we very explicitly want to do that. But what if we could retain everything that's in one level and then load another level or another level or another level or all of those levels all at the same time? Well, what we're talking about is a concept called sublevels. So when we open the window levels window and the panel, it gives us access to something called sublevels, although this isn't quite as obvious. So a sublevel is one level inside of another. And the reason we can do this is because each level is just a container of actors. So why not put a container inside of a container, inside of a container, inside of a container. They're just more containers as far as Unreal is concerned. But when we do this with levels, we create an interesting relationship between a persistent level, the thing that contains the other things, and a sublevel, the level itself, which contains potentially other levels or other actors. So it creates this relationship, the persistent level that holds the thing and a sublevel which is its own level, but inside of another. So we need to kind of think about which thing we're editing when we're editing it. So as we will see when we move back to Unreal, we're going to need to know what the current level is. And usually this will be the persistent level. So the current level will receive the any created actors. So the thing we're looking at in the editor will be a level but it will be a persistent level, which means it's not unloaded or loaded, it's persistent. And we need to make sure that's the current level because that's the thing we will be editing, which will make more sense here in just a second. But I also note here that sublevels can be organized into folders. So suddenly we can start to think, oh, we can put levels inside levels, inside levels, inside levels, have a persistent level that has a whole bunch of different levels. And suddenly this unlocks things like open worlds or large emergent designs within Unreal because now we can sort of move towards dynamically loading a lot of these sublevels. So we could create very, very large spaces in Unreal and have them subdivided up into a bunch of different parts. And in fact, that's one of the reasons the Unreal has this. So why do we care about sublevels? Because they allow us to divide up a potentially very, very large space into a bunch of really, really small ones. Each of those levels has its own actors and relationships and blueprints. They all exist separately from each other and they can then be loaded as needed. And this is kind of the trick to all of this. So we understand that the computer has finite memory. So what we do is we subdivide very, very large space, potentially as large as an open world or as small as maybe a mansion with a bunch of different rooms and only load the things we need when we need it. And that makes our code much more efficient and our game or our project much more efficient correspondingly because we're only loading the things we need and we're not loading a bunch of extra things. And also though, as a side bonus, creates an opportunity for different people to work on a large space, a large game, separately, because they're each editing their own level, which potentially is a sublevel and a larger persistent level. So each person could be editing a level in Unreal in completely different places, potentially on other sides of the globe, all of which would contribute to a larger project, and there would be one persistent level that contained all of these different pieces, and each person could be working separately. So this first point and the second point are incredibly important for Unreal and especially creating very, very large spaces. Finally, as we will see in another video, we can dynamically load and unload things working in streaming volumes and then using blueprints to do the same thing, which is a separate video by itself. So using sublevels works us towards that first step of dynamically loading and unloading spaces as we need them. So let's move over to Unreal and walk through this process of creating a new level 
and then working through creating this persistent and sublevel relationship. And then in another video, we'll talk about using streaming volumes and then finally using blueprints to achieve the same outcome. So moving over to Unreal, we see I have set up a variation of the third person template that's just a big old box right here. And if I click play, we will drop into the box and we can run around and bonk into the walls if we want. Not terribly exciting bonk, right? Kind of stuck within this large box. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to create a new level. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be a little bit lazy about it. Instead of creating a new level and creating a bunch of new stuff in that level, I'm just going to create a copy of the existing level. So down here in the content browser, I have main area, which is what I have called this. I'm going to select it, right click and duplicate it. And now I have main area and main area one. I'm just going to press enter and save that. So if I pull up main area one, it looks more or less just like a box, but I'm going to change it a little bit. I'm going to take out this wall. And then I'm going to do something a little bit weird over here in world outliner. I'm going to take out all the lighting right here. I'm going to say, okay, take out the light source. Yes. Take out the light mass. Yes. Post processing. Yes. Skylight. Yes. And everything is going to go dark and I'm going to rebuild this. So what have I done? Well, I'm not going to need lighting in this level. And that's a really weird thing to think about because you're like, well, we have a level we're going to need lighting, but the lighting is not going to come from this level. It's going to come from the persistent level. And I'm going to use this as a sub level of a persistent level. So as soon as this lighting is being rebuilt, which it should take just a little bit of time here, we're going to take this, make it a sub level, of another level. So I took out a wall and took out its light sources. And I give it a second to rebuild everything. Yep, okay. So now we just have a huge flat space with no lighting, so it's completely dark. And I will also take out player start, because I won't need it. So let's save this right here. Okay, I'm going to move back to main area. And now we have our lighting back because this has the lighting. So now I'm also going to take out a wall from this right here. And now this is going to need to rebuild its own lighting. So the shadow will disappear. And you'll notice I created a sub level that was missing a wall. And I created another level that was missing a wall, but each one was missing a different wall. And we'll see how that plays together here in just a second when our lighting is rebuilt. And then what we will do is we will add main area one as a sub level to main area. We'll give our lighting here just a second to rebuild everything. Okay. Well, while that's going on, we will go ahead and set up this relationship. So I need to go to window and then levels. And then it will show us this and it will say, Hey, you have a persistent and then the lighting's done. <laughs> we have a persistent level. Oh, this is good. That's what we expect. But we want to add an existing level as a sub level to this persistent one. So under here, levels down here to add existing because it exists. And I'll say, Hey, which one do you want to add? And I want to add this one and then open. Notice that the color slightly changed. So it came down here. I'm going to re-click on persistent and come down here to make current. I right clicked. So I clicked on persistent and then make current and notice the bold changed. Now the reason I did that is because now main area one was added to persistent level. So it's not a sub level. And in fact, you can see it sticking on top of this one right here, but I want to make sure that persistent level is the current one because that's what I want the changes to go towards. So I'm going to do a little bit weird here. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to come down and I'm going to say, Hey, select all in level, select actors right here and main area. And then I'm going to come in here. And what I want to do is shift the whole thing. So come down here and shift this whole thing over right here. Notice I'm moving the entire level. 
but it's not exactly where I want. So let's come over here to rotate. I'll scroll out a little bit so we can see it. And let's rotate the whole thing. 180 degrees. And then we'll move it over and move it down. Then move it over just a little bit and put everything more or less right there. So what have I done? Well, I've created in a persistent level main area and a sub level main area one right here. And notice it's just a slightly different color. And I'm going to go ahead and close this. This was open for window and levels. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. So I'm using my scroll wheel to, to do this. Notice we in fact have two different spaces. We have this over here on our right that is main area and everything else that was also in main area one. In fact, and notice now we have multiple things in here with the same name. And when I go to build, we're going to see a little bit of an error, but I'm just going to do it so we can see it in action. It's going to say, hey, uh, you've got things by the same name. So go ahead and rebuild everything. So why are we rebuilding a third time? Well, because we changed the lighting once and then we changed the lighting again. And now we've combined a bunch of stuff that have combined lighting. So now we're going to have to do it one more time. Okay. So I'm going to minimize this while that's going on. So what we have now is a persistent level and a sub level, but what we don't have and what won't quite be covered in this video, there we go. And lighting is done. So let's go ahead and go to play because we're going to notice a problem. I'm going to load into this and I'm facing a wall. And if I turn, oh gosh, there's a big old void, right? And what if we run near it? Um, it's not there. It's not there because as far as the persistent level is concerned, it was not loaded. It was not told to load the sub level, but we created the relationship. So in the next video, we're going to talk about a one way to solve it. And the video after that, we're going to talk about a totally different way to solve it more dynamically. So for this level, for this level, for this video, the entire point was to understand the relationship between persistent levels and sub levels. So again, we created a copy of a level. I made some changes in the copy. Then we went to window levels and I went to levels, add existing, and I added an existing level to this level, which made it a persistent level and main area one became a sub level. What we did not cover. And again, we'll be moving into the next video is how do we tell it to load the thing? So that's where we're going next.